The Island at the Center of the World by Russell Shorto, published in 2004, is a narrative social history of Manhattan's founding. It focuses on individuals and their struggles in order to convey larger historical details about the development of American society. Drawing from recently translated letters, ledgers, and accounts from the New Amsterdam colony, Shorto argues that the Dutch founding of New Amsterdam, prior to being conquered by England and joined with New York, is much more significant to modern-day Manhattan and American history than previously realized. To Shorto, the Dutch influence on New York, especially its democratic ideals, is underestimated. Shorto's recounts the history of New Amsterdam from founding to township, how this fits into the greater scheme of 17th century political clashes between the Netherlands and England, and the people that represent the colony's struggles. In addition to historical figures such as Oliver Cromwell and the Stuarts, Shorto engages several peripheral characters ranging from the philosophers, political figures, governors, lawyers, prostitutes, and smugglers. Shorto also spends significant time giving a rounded account of the relationship between Native Americans and colonists. Despite their different culture, they successfully coexist with New Amsterdam colonists. Shorto breaks down the pseudo-legend of Manhattan's sale for $24 to Peter Minuet, the leader of the colony, specifically that the Native Americans are aware of their choice, and that ownership is not a tangible concept in their culture, in contrast to the preconceived notion that they are being tricked. Shorto also describes what life is like in the early days of New York, how different areas got their names, the Knickerbocker Hospital, the abundance of resources, natural life, and a wealth of historical details. Shorto begins at the discovery of the island. In 1607, Henry Hudson, an explorer named Henry Hudson, is sent to discover a new passage to Asia for the Muscovy Company of England. He attempts a new path that involves sailing over the top of the globe. After he fails, Hudson tries to find a passage by going around Russia and fails again. In 1608, the Dutch East India Company asks Hudson to try once more, and when he follows rumors of a secret river passage to Asia that starts in the New World, he accidentally discovers the island of Manhattan instead. This is labeled by historians as Henry Hudson's second voyage, the Northeast Passage. What will become New York is first called New Amsterdam and is settled by the Dutch. During the growth of New Amsterdam, Shorto primarily follows the lesser-known Adrian van der Donk, a lawyer trained at University of Leiden, tracing his life from 1620 to 1640. He's representative of modern American values, spending time living with Native Americans, and wrote an account titled A Description of New Netherland. During its first 20 years, the colony of New Amsterdam steadily develops trade, commerce, and culture. The Dutch West India Company eventually gives up the area in 1640, declaring it a free trade zone. This inspires individualism and a boost in trade, and it thus becomes a trading center for the New World. Diversity in the colony is key to understanding Shorto's thesis. There are only 500 settlers, but over 18 different languages spoken. The population quickly embraces a variety of ethnic and religious backgrounds. The tolerance and free trade values of the Netherlands again represents what America as a whole will come to value, arguing that these values are present from the start. Ultimately, van der Donk becomes a democratic leader, representing the values of the people, advocating self-government against the current governor, Peter Stuyvesant, a member of the Dutch East India Trading Company. Stuyvesant is set in the ways of old Europe, looking down on van der Donk's democratic and progressive values not believing the area should evolve into the town it will come to be. Despite, and in many ways, because of a, their clash, in 1653, New Amsterdam is made an official town. By 1664, England conquers New Amsterdam during the Second Anglo-Dutch War, renaming it New York. In a significant decision that greatly shaped how New York developed into such a central, modern city, England doesn't change its structure and representation. Diversity is encouraged, and settlers can have a voice in local government. In 1673, the Dutch successfully take back New York. Shorto goes on to connect this decision and New York's 1787 decision to not ratify the Constitution, without maintaining individual rights. Shorto's narrative poses the question of why the Dutch story of Manhattan has remained hidden and underplayed. Part of this answer is the very recent translation of documents, there just wasn't enough to draw on until now. Taking into account these recent translations, 
his book successfully connects the Dutch socio-cultural influence in New Amsterdam to modern-day Manhattan. The Dutch values present during its rise are still present today. In its transition from trading center to full town, it remains central to the larger history swirling around it, in both the Americas and Europe. As Shorto puts it, it was Manhattan, in other words, right from the start. The book is remarked as a masterpiece of storytelling and first-rate intellectual history by the Wall Street Journal. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.